This is a 1968 Hardinge TFB tool room lathe. Um, TFB stands for a turn face bore because it's um, not set up for threading. Instead it has this, this uh, preset bar where you can set these little blocks to have your carriage stop at various locations. So there's, there's four of those. So if you've got to make a bunch of parts, it speeds up the process a little bit. <coughs> uh, this machine has been modified to make it um, less prone to wearing out. The usual ways that rely on a uh, an oiling system to help hopefully separate the metal from the metal has been replaced with um, Delrin AF, which is uh, hard plastic with Teflon in it, so that uh, you could theoretically run this thing dry, but it does work better with uh, light oil on the ways. The tailstock has been lightened up by about um, eight pounds, I believe, so it's a little easier to manage and. I machined this flat and put a plate here so that instead of when you're taking this off, instead of just having to muscle it around whatever table you got, you can just sort of park it over here, reposition yourself if you have to take it off completely, and then put it on, uh, on that. It also has a digital readout system added to it. That's not working right now because these things are basically cheap junk that uh, they're accurate when they work but sometimes they, they just they just die um, this one still works they're only 30 bucks a piece for the whole you know that and the and the um, scale on it this the uh, this one died. Let's see if it came back to life again. That, that has happened. Uh, no, apparently not. It's like this unit that that gives out. You just buy another one of those. Plug it in and it'll work again. Um, gee, what else is different about this than standard? Um, oh yeah, of course. It, uh, it runs on standard household 220. That's run, and then, oh. The uh, regular variable belt speed control works just fine. Well, the uh, RPM it says over here isn't, isn't, doesn't really coordinate with the RPM that it actually is. Um, I added a tachometer to it some years ago. It runs off magnets attached to this thing and a uh, little Hall effect meter I made over here. And I guess the interesting thing about the electronic um, converter. Yeah, the belts are a little slippy. So if you go all the way down, sometimes it might just slip too much and stop. The interesting thing about the uh, phase converter system on here is that you can use it to adjust the speed also so you can go really really slow ten and a half rpm if you needed to do something that uh, 
like winding springs or something like that. A little weakness it has though is that the um, going to high speed, which doubles the speed of the motor. I'm not sure if it's quite double, but no, I guess it's triple. Thousand to three thousand. Um, you have to go by that instead of uh, using this because it'll it'll kick the um, kick the uh, overload on this. But you know it, it's it's nothing. Really, you just if, if you've done that, well, I'll show you. Let's get the speed up a little here. If you turn it off here, and turn it on again while you're uh, in the high speed, see high, low. It just kicks it off, and all you do is this. So you can get pretty much a uh, infinite variation of RPMs and torques with this system. It never uh, kicks off the circuit breaker. Show you the uh, the travel. It's got the power feeds works just fine. This is actually a DC motor, so if you use this thing and you want to control the speed, uh, I don't recommend having this below maximum, you know, dialed down to 50% or whatever and use this at the same time because that the really old-fashioned um, circuitry in there might not like it and possibly burn out. I don't know, I've never, I've never wanted to find out the hard way, so I never did it. The great thing about this, or should I say, the thing it can do that I have so far found useless is that I can do both at the same time. <clears throat> of course it has forward and reverse. And uh, in case you don't already know about these, um, when you turn off the spindle, it also stops that. Oh, here's another feature I added to it. Let me. Uh, drilling it's really helpful when you got a, a big drill in there like one and a half inches and you have to go really slow and steady 
to drill. It, it just keeps you from uh, bogging the drill down as you might when you're trying to spin this handle. The usual uh, feed on this. Also, if you're boring something with a boring bar, that, that would be very useful. Although, of course, you'd be using this with a tool post for that. <laughs> so, there is... A fairly complete set of sock or collets, three jaw chuck, another another center, and then various uh, attachments, tool posts, and stuff like that in there. All right. Oh, here's a. Uh, chuck stop I made for it. This, uh, this goes in here and the collet closer clamps in place and then you, you can, uh, if you have the chuck on there, you can um, make a bunch of pieces with the back stop on it so all the pieces are the same length. Uh, collet closer which makes things go very quickly. Uh, what else to show you? Um, this goes from um, metric to inch to uh, fractions. Got some uh, cones here for turning tubing. Yeah, there might be smaller sizes of this also. <coughs> okay, so it's got this size 220 plug on it. <coughs> 